This is The Ramsey Show. You can be intentional about your character. You can have money and a career. You are the hero in your story. Live from the headquarters of Ramsey Solutions, it's The Ramsey Show, where dad is dumb, cash is king, and the paid-off home mortgage has taken the place of the BMW as the status symbol of choice. I'm Dave Ramsey, your host, Ken Coleman, Ramsey personality, host of The Ken Coleman Show, best-selling author of the book, Paycheck to Purpose, is my co-host today, as we talk about your relationships, your mental health, your jobs, your career, and your money. It's life on the radio. We're going to talk about you right in front of you. It's a free call at 888-825-5225, 888-825-5225. Bailey is in Oklahoma City. Hi, Bailey. Welcome to the Ramsey Show. Hi, Dave. It's nice to talk to you. Sure. We're glad you're here. How can we help? I have a question. Um, I've, me and my husband have made it through. Uh, baby set three um, on the 3B. We got our house, paid 20% down. Um, and um, we, you know, had, after having paid off almost $20,000 $20, in consumer debt, um, I just had a baby, um, our third child, um, but I had a lot of medical complications and I'm still not completely in the clear. Um, so I'm getting bills, uh, they're starting to come in. And so my question is how uh, best to go about paying them down. Um, since we have our emergency fund, um, I'm still, I still haven't received all of the bills mm-hmm. um, that will be coming. And then, uh, of course, I'm still, like I said, not completely in the clear. So I don't know what this is going to mean for me medically long term. Mm-hmm. Okay. Well, the, uh, you know, you got to pay the bill, obviously. Um, it, yeah. it, I'm assuming insurance is paid all it's going to, and the bill you're getting is after insurance has done its part, right? That's right. And I get a 20% discount because I'm employed by the hospital. Oh, that's wonderful. Okay. So how much debt, how much medical debt have you got? Well, thus far, it, it's not, um, it's on a, a ton so far. Um, right now we're sitting about $5,000, but that's before um, getting an ICU bill. And then I'll also, um, we were able to stockpile a lot of cash while I was pregnant, but. How much? Um, well, well, it's our emergency fund. Oh, you have so, your emergency fund, and you said you were saving for a house, fund. and you stockpiled cash, or the the saving for the house was the was the stockpile. Well, we bought the house, so that's... Oh, yeah, you got the house. The okay, so yes. do you have money in addition to your emergency fund when you said stockpiled? We don't. Okay, how much is in your to... emergency fund? Mm-hmm. Um, it is about we had it at twenty thousand dollars, and then um. Now it's my husband was in a bad accident, so I had to cash flow um, a car as well. Um, so you I didn't have, have insurance on the car. Um, we we did. Um, they um, the company paid for um, the car paid about fifty. They gave us fifty six hundred for the car, um, but we were a little bit short of that. We had to get a car. Um, that would fit all of our car seats safely. I have three kids, and they're all in car seats. Um, so we ended up spending about five thousand dollars. So we're about fifteen thousand um, dollars in our emergency fund. Okay. So write a check and pay your five thousand dollars medical bill. Okay. So I should I should um, pay like as they come. I don't need to wait until they. Yeah. Um, well, there's no. There's, no, there's nothing to wait on. There, you owe them. You might as well okay. just pay it. Right. And what's your household okay. income? It's, I just got a $20,000 ratio. It's What's your household income? About one forty. Okay. Well, you could probably cash flow the five grand without touching it. And you need to you need to get the okay. bills paid and get your emergency fund rebuilt. Okay. Just start okay. concentrating That's on this. Thought. Okay. Okay. And, and, okay. And let me give you a hint. The car that you had before it got totaled mm-hmm. would fit the car seats. It doesn't. It didn't, it didn't fit, fit the car, fit the car seats. seats. So well, that no. means that you did not need a car that fitted all the car seats. You justified no, this. We, this was not an emergency a, purchase. This was a choice. We had a baby. We had a baby. I after, know. Right the, after but, I mean, what were you planning to do if he hadn't totaled his car? We were so, we were saving money to buy to cash flow a car. No, you weren't. You had an emergency fund. You didn't have any money saved above the emergency fund. I've asked this question four times. 
You told me you had an emergency fund and you put everything else down on the house. You had $20,000 and you took money out of your emergency fund to upgrade your car after your car was totaled and use the baby as an excuse to do it. So I'm not letting you get away with that one. That's rationalization. Okay. Now, I don't mind if you upgrade your car, but let's not take it out of the emergency fund. And let's cash flow out of the $140,000 and get the $5,000 paid as quickly as you can. Just on a practical note, you can get a $5,600 car that will fit three car seats. You can. Yeah. it's You really can. Yeah, yeah. It's very possible. Very possible. People do it all the time. And, um, well, I mean... Um, Actually, you, you, you could about three months ago, but now you can. No, <laughs> I still I still submit that you can. I'm uh, kidding. I'm I know kidding. he is. But I'd say this, Bailey, let me encourage you on so, this. I mean, you've got some unnecessary fear here. The same discipline, the same focus that allowed you to build up money to pay for a house, to to build up a $20,000 emergency fund will allow you to pay off the bills on $140,000 income. Yeah. Nothing to be scared get of. Get to $5,000 paid off, build up your emergency fund, and then yeah. get on with your life. The thing you've got to do out here, folks, and I, I'm just not going to allow you to do it, mm -hmm. uh, because I had to stop it, and if you're going to win, you got to stop it. You cannot use these life events as um, rationalization, as, as as a reason to violate good principles. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like, okay, I'm trapped. I have to go into debt. No, you don't. I'm trapped. I have to use my – when you're purchasing a car and it's an emergency – that's highly unusual. Mm -hmm. Almost always when you're buying a car, especially if you're upgrading an existing car, that's by definition not an emergency. By definition. So um, whatever it is you're doing, just don't rationalize that. Because here's the thing. You drain that stinking emergency fund down. You have a real emergency. Mm -hmm. Now you got no money. And you're right back to being normal and broke again. So you have to guard that stuff and go, okay, it, 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 you know, is the new mattress an emergency? Is the bass boat an emergency? Answer, no. No. No, 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 no. Well, the old mattress is bad. I don't care. Save up and buy it. It's an upgrade. Okay? I don't care. Yeah. I don't like my old couch. I don't care. Mm -hmm. I don't care. It's not a freaking emergency. My mother-in-law's coming over. I need a new couch. It's not an emergency. Mm -hmm. Tell her to stay at the Hampton Inn. Yeah. No, it's not an emergency. You know, you buying a couch for someone else to sit on and be impressed with uh, uh, by the weekend because it suddenly occurred that she's going to come visit you. It's not an emergency. But we do this stuff. We all we create these this hyperbole, this drama in our heads that causes us to get off the tracks and run down the thing. So here's the here's the thing. Medical complications are an emergency. Yes, that, that's that is an unexpected event. That is not an expected event. Uh, if you weren't down to 15 and you had 20, you'd be less worried about taking five out for the medical. That's correct. So, you know, thank God you didn't take 15 out for a better car because you had to have more car seats. Oh, and I have to have an airbag. And I have to have a... Oh, the automatic doors are an absolute necessity. I don't know how people around the world deal with life without automatic doors. Unless you're driving your fun vintage car, then it's worth it. Well, says the guy who drove his fun vintage car. <laughs> this is the Ramsey Show. Look, I love real estate, and I want you to have a house, but I don't want a house to have you. That's why you need to get in touch with Churchill Mortgage to make sure you do this right. These guys are awesome. They'll help you get on a smarter mortgage plan because they're committed to doing what's right for you. That means they check in every year with free consultations to help you stay on the right plan. They show you how to save money and interest so you can build wealth faster. They walk you through the total cost of your loan so you can make the best choice. Basically, they care. That's why we call them Ramsey Trusted. You can achieve debt-free home ownership and Churchill is here to help. Go to their site, churchillmortgage.com slash Ramsey to start your approval or get more information.
Ken Coleman, Ramsey personality, joins me this hour. Open for this today as my co-host. I'm sorry. Open phones at 888-825-5225. You're out of here after yeah. this hour. I'm just saying. See you, everybody. It's been great. Toss you. <laughs> uh, Alex is with us. Alex is in Nashville. Hi, Alex. Welcome to the Ramsey Show. Hello, gentlemen. Thank you for taking my call. I'll try to be concise. I work in IT since COVID uh, overtime has been readily available. My base salary is $40,000. i have been able to make about 65000 since COVID uh, annually for the past two years. I've used that surplus to pay off debt and cash flow a wedding. I found out today our rent is going up by $500, and I'm wondering if I should do the budget for our rent as we plan to move or not move based on overtime or based on my base salary. Wow. Uh, if the overtime is going to be there, I don't mind you doing that. the point. Of, the, whole, the whole thing, there's no magic to the fourth of your income going to housing. The, the whole point of it is don't be house poor, whether you're renting or whether you own. If your house payment, your rent is a huge percentage of your the money you have available, then you don't have any money left after you pay it. It's kind of a simple big number concept it's not a splitting hairs difference here uh but that's a lot of overtime uh are you going to continue to work that kind of overtime for a while to come just for another year i should have my student loans paid off in the next six eight months Mm -hmm. um so i'm looking forward to pay to paying that off that's the ultimate goal yeah um from a numbers perspective our rent is going to go up to twenty five hundred dollars a month if they don't come down we've submitted like a like a basically an on we're trying to get to negotiate. So our rent is either going to go up for, to 2500 bring home per month between my girlfriend and I, and we get married in October. We bring home about $7,000 a month uh, net. So that's, you know, it's a little higher than 25%. So I don't know if we should move to someplace cheaper. Yeah, you or should. what we should do. You should if you can. And, and, and the reason is simple. Um, the, the rent is, is, you know, it's patience. You're not investing in something here. You're parking your butt somewhere till you get some money and buy a house. And the more you pay in rent, the long, the less money you're going to have for other things like getting out of student loan debt and like uh, buying a house. And so, okay. you know, anything I can do to get cheap, cheaper rent anytime, I'm going to try to do it within reason. And so, um, yeah, yeah, I mean uh, – Rents in Nashville have gone through the roof uh, because a stupid mayor raised the property taxes through the roof. The um, Comrade Cooper, the I mayor I was hoping there, you were going to put that out know. there. Yeah. Oh, my God. He's Comrade just destroyed Cooper. the economy yeah. over there. But the uh, Not destroyed it, but it just hammered the businesses and everybody else. And so those high property taxes are now being reflected in your rent because the landlord's costs went up. And so you get to pay the taxes is what it amounts to. Um, <clears throat> Alex, what do you do in IT? What's your position? So I basically help our company keep people working from home. So we have thousands of people that work from home. When those thousands of people have an issue, they call a number. I talk to them and work them, help them stay online, okay. keep them working. So, so internal tech support would be one way of saying it. Correct. Uh, what's Correct. your goals in technology? Do you see a ladder? Do you have something you aspire to in technology? So I was in the midst of making a career transition before the overtime became available. Um, so I'm just using the overtime as a vehicle to pay off my debt. Ultimately, my goals are not in IT. Okay. Well, I, 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 the reason I asked that is I think Dave's right. I, I would lower my rent, and I would also pretty quickly uh, get out of this overtime reliance and move yourself up the professional ladder so we're increasing our income uh, as well as decreasing that rent as we're saving for a house. So uh, sounds like he's got a good plan. Yeah, and that's exactly what I would do. Yeah, because here's the thing. The rent is – I did that when I, when Sharon and I first got married a million years ago. Um, we rented a – our first property that we rented was very expensive. And uh, I was actually um, – I thought I was so proud because I was renting the Taj Mahal. Right. I mean, you know, it was course. great. It was yeah. an amazing property. And um, I went to visit my old elementary school principal – now that I had come back home to Nashville, oh uh, yeah, local boy does good. Just just dropped by to say sure, hi. Right. I, had, I had a job. I had a wife. I thought <laughs> life was good. And she said, "Where are you living?" And I told her. And she said, "Good Lord, what are you paying?" And I told her. And she said, "Well, that's dumb. Why are you paying that much in rent?" What? <laughs> yeah, really. We literally moved out of that property at the end of the lease six months later, and 
cut our rent in half. Oh, that felt good. In half. That feels good. So uh, different numbers than Alex is dealing with, but it was a different world in those days. But, I mean, we moved to a one-bedroom apartment uh, in a not-so-great complex uh, to and cut our rent. Actually, it was more than in half. That's wow. pretty bizarre when you yeah. think about it. But but that was a place to camp until we saved money That's to right. buy something. Temporary. And so it was it was a complete waste to mm-hmm. rent to spend a whole lot of money on rent. Spend as little money as you can on rent and yeah. So yeah, that that's that's the premise I'm coming at this. So Alex, you're getting the same advice that my own elementary school teacher uh, our school principal gave me uh, when I went back to visit. Years I would have loved to have been there when she dropped that on you. She uh, was um, classic <laughs> no nonsense. Classic no nonsense. What was her name? Point. Evelyn Hyde. Oh, Mrs. Hyde. Everybody Mrs. needs Hyde. a Mrs. Hyde in their life. Yeah, she, was a, she was a wonderful lady. That's yeah, cool. She, just an absolute jewel. All right, <laughs> let's see here. Earl in Philadelphia. Hi, Earl. Welcome to the Ramsey Show. Yeah, how you doing, Dave? I'm a little nervous right now talking to you. But <laughs> no trouble. But, um, how can we help? Yeah, um, I'm a government employee, and I'm looking to possibly uh, retire um, this coming year. And um, currently, right now, I have in my TSP about 1.8 million. Way to go! Uh, Whoa, <laughs> you're a rock star, man. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, and and with the government, they you don't feel you don't person. sound real impressed with you. I'm impressed with you. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. It's it, having that much money. It still makes me a little nervous. Um, but um, and, and it's traditional. But um, yeah, with the government, they provide you with like a um, you know, financial courses. And um, one of the guys who gave the course, I guess he's like a financial guy. And I just said, let me just talk to him. And he mentioned something about a fixed index annuity. And I know how you feel about annuities, but this fixed index annuity. Um, you know, he basically gave it a spin where, you know, when the market goes down, it doesn't really go down. And I don't know. I just don't really feel too good about it. And also, too, I'm, I, I did talk to one of the Smart Vester pros, mm-hmm. and I'm going to talk to another one, good. you know, to, to interview him. Good. But um, I, I just want to know, how, how do you feel about I mean, I don't know much about fixed index annuity. I did a little bit of research, mm-hmm. but I just want to hear it from you. Okay. Um. Well, basically what we're talking about is an indexed annuity that has a, has a floor to it. It's okay. not going to go below a certain return, probably 5% or 6% or something like that. And it's probably indexed. Typically, it'll be off of something like the S&P 500. Right, Meaning, right. But in, indexed true. means it's not fixed. Indexed means it follows an index. Okay. okay. So, like, have you got uh, your, your TSP in the C plan? Some of yeah. it? Yeah. Okay. So the C is an index. Mm-hmm. That's an index. So you have an indexed investment now. If you have money in the S plan, that is an mm-hmm. index. It follows a small cap index. Uh, and so all you're doing is you'd find a, a group of stocks that the uh, weighted average of those stocks represent an index. So an S&P 500 is an index. And so it follows mm-hmm. that. The, the problem is not the index the pro- or indexing. The problem is not the floor. The problem is that the annuity fees are double what you are, what you get with a mutual fund, and his commissions are four x what he would get if he sold you the same mutual fund, same index, without mm-hmm. without it being in an annuity, and so okay. this guy is this guy wants a commission. You need to run. Okay, <laughs> okay. I, I kind of got that feeling, but I said, you know, let me talk to someone. But I I just didn't feel right about it. Um, Trust you your know, feeling. So. Yeah, yeah, your your feeling yeah. was right, but that's that's all it is. It means it's gonna it's a conservative way that gives you a floor, but you're paying dearly for it. Um, it's not the end of the world. It's not an absolute horrible product. It's not as bad as like whole life or something like that, but it, it's uh, it's not as good as just a group of mutual funds with your SmartVestor Pro, which will have much lower fees. They make much less commission on you doing that. You got a much better situation. You got two million dollars. Um, you need to learn to trust your gut. You have a really good gut instinct. This is the Ramsey Show. Chaos. 
That's what it can feel like when your business is growing so fast, you've outgrown your financial and accounting software. The faster you grow, the more likely you are to lose control of the numbers. And here's the reality. If you don't know your numbers, you don't know your business. That's why we use NetSuite by Oracle, the number one cloud financial system. Over 28,000 companies use NetSuite by Oracle, including Ramsey Solutions, because NetSuite gives us a single view of everything we need to make daily decisions. Whether you're making a few million to hundreds of millions a year, NetSuite gives you the visibility and control of the things you need to grow, like your financials, inventory, HR, planning, budgeting, and more, all in one dashboard. Go to netsuite.com slash Ramsey right now to get their free white paper, Jumpstart Your CFO Career. Ken Coleman, Ramsey personality, is my co-host today. This is The Ramsey Show. We're so glad you're with us. Kaylee is on the line in Provo, Utah. It says on my screen, Kaylee, that you are debt-free. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. It's an honor to be here today. Well, honor to have you. How much did you pay off? I paid just shy of 41000 It was like $40,932. So. Way to go. Very cool. And how long did this take you? This took me 15 months. Okay. And your range of income during that time? So my range of, when I started, it was 50000 and I was able to double my income within that time. Good Lord. What did you do? Yeah. Oh, Dave, do you know what's so interesting? When I started this journey, I was like, I need to make more money to make this happen. And within a month, job opportunities were coming at me. Mm. And I was literally able to double my income. Well, what were you doing before and what are you doing now? So I was a campaign manager for a grill company, and now I'm the vice president of marketing for a supplement company here in Utah. Of course you are. Oh, my gosh. (laughs) That is so amazing. And all it was was you looked up and said, I want more money. I'm ready. I was ready for it, you know. I want more money. And I went and got me some. <laughs> yeah, yes, shocking, shocking strategy, by yeah, the way. It's, she it, looked for it I'm, I'm surprised you aren't sitting at home waiting on the government to send you some. Instead, you just went and found you some money. <laughs> I want some money, and I'm going to go find some. I like you. That's amazing. How old are you? I'm 33. Cool. Have you got a degree in marketing? You know what? I didn't. I went to school uh, in political science. I thought I was going to be a lawyer, but didn't go that route. <laughs> okay. So uh, Ken Coleman wants to know. Mm-hmm how you did this okay you you just decided but i mean how did you go identify the place and go get the job tell people how that's done so it's really interesting i mean i feel like i've always known my value but i just kind of took what was given me and it really i know this sounds so cliche but it it genuinely was a decision it was like okay if i need to make this X amount of money to be out of debt in this time. This is how much I'm going to have to make. And I only applied for jobs that were going to pay me that. And guess what happened? People, people responded and it, it worked. All right. So so what about, so what about the imposter syndrome? That didn't affect you at all. You go for a VP of marketing position. Oh, I feel it every day, but you just, you, you fake it till you make it right. There you go. You (laughs) stepped right through it. So you, you're telling me you didn't need a marketing degree to be a VP of marketing. No, so I, but I worked in marketing for about oh, of seven course. years prior to get. So, you know, I mean, it was on the job experience. There we yeah. go. There we go. Yeah, Any, anyone who tells <laughs> you didn't have to go back to school it. to double your income. You just went and doubled your income. <laughs> yep. Learned on the job. That's correct. Yeah. Apparently, you're good at marketing and you marketed you well. Yes. I like it. This is powerful. <laughs> you're great. Okay. So, tell us how you started this whole journey, this Ramsey stuff of getting out of debt 15 months ago. So I tell you what, my dad preached Dave Ramsey when I was a teen, and I'm not going to lie to you, Dave. I eye rolled like every time. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it was a cuss word at total, your house. Yeah. Oh yeah, he gave us a total money makeover book, you know, every year for Christmas. Um, so for a while, I just tried it the Kaylee way, which was 
wait until I had whatever left over my paycheck to pay it off, which you know how that worked. It didn't. So I just started with baby steps. And I'm telling you, I mean, it was a boring life, rice and beans, no traveling, saying no to going out with friends. And but within 15 months, I'm, I'm free. And so it was worth it. And I have my six month savings and it's just everything's just falling into place. So your dad's got to be like running around the house cheering. Oh, he was the first person I called and he's like, you need to get on the Dave Ramsey show. (laughs) (laughs) But he did. He just, he, it was the Dave Ramsey method, baby steps and the total money makeover. So I'm so proud of you. Well done. I know he is. That's so cool. Very cool. All right. What do you tell people the key to getting out of debt is double your income? What else? Be consistent. And I know this is the whole thing, right? Live like no one else today so you can live like no one else tomorrow or in the future that's real so who cares what people think how you live you're going to be free and it's it's worth it the boring haul is worth it <laughs> so did uh did any of your friends like to give you the eye roll like hey she's kind of lost it oh 100 percent oh <laughs> when i'm sitting here eating ramen and they're like you want to go get sushi i'm like can't not in the budget this month <laughs> getting out of debt getting out of debt yep. i like Making it Making goals. i like it Okay, so you went and apply, you just applied for the job and walked in and they gave it to you, or did you know somebody, or how did you get how did you get your foot in the door where you got this new job? So I did know someone, and I started out as a brand manager, and I mean I worked my tail off, um, and I am the only woman. Hey, happy International Women's Day! I'm the only woman um, in an upper management role there as a VP, and. Yeah, I, I had to work, but I did know I did have some con- connections and really just put myself out there. How yeah. long were you in the brand manager role? Um, for about a year and a half. Mm-hmm. Wow. So, so you, when you started this, you were already in that role. Yep. And then you yes, just sir. went. You went for the. You went for an internal promotion then. Yep. Yes, sir. Okay, I got it. All right. Okay, good. Well, but again, uh, not only are we hearing an amazing story here of how she worked the baby steps, but now this is somebody who saw a ladder, Dave, and said, I'm going to go step on this ladder, and I know if I climb, uh, I'm going to be able to climb into something to make the money I want to make. And you got in, and now you're the only female in leadership. Good on you. Yeah. That, that's fantastic. That's exactly how you do it. I don't think they care if you're a female or not. They I think don't. they notice that you do the freaking job well. Yeah. Yep. Oh, 100%. Uh, that's yeah. right. You're a rock star. That's what it is. Yep. So, good for you. Wow. Well done. Well done. Touchdown. All right. <laughs> it's you, Kaylee in Provo, Utah. We got a copy of Baby Steps Millionaires for you. This time you got to read that Dave Ramsey book, not I yes. roll it. And because that's the next chapter in your history, baby. It's coming. You're coming. You're going to be a millionaire now. And then also going to send you a copy of Total Money Makeover so you can abuse one of your eye rolling friends with it. And uh, keep, keep, the, keep the cuss word Dave Ramsey thing moving forward. It's part of my brand so uh good stuff i'm proud of you count it down let's hear a debt-free scream i'm debt free yeah <laughs> yeah i feel like she yelled that so loud the three two one that the phone muted itself i think it, yeah it was, that was that, that could have been a lot it. of passion yeah, a little there. stage gate there yeah oh my gosh you know what I, the thing i love about that though is it's not just uh positive thinking like i can no. speak my way into something mm-hmm. that's not true but you know zig ziglar used to say he goes well positive thinking won't guarantee you're going to get there but negative thinking will guarantee you're not that's true and so she just says um I mean, your whole thing on Paycheck to Purpose is, you know, I'm going to look over there and I'm going to reach over there and grab that and make oh, it mine. That's right. That's right. I'm, I'm going to use a connection, which she did. Mm-hmm. And, and, and these are this is how we get opportunities in life. Doors open for us. We don't have to always kick a door down. That's been romanticized. Well, and there's no lightning strikes. There's not. It's not random. No. She reaches out to a friend. She gets in and then she moves up. Busts it. She gets Busted. in and she crushes it. She wins gets noticed, the now. Gets noticed. Then the next appears. Yeah, exactly. You got to win where you are. You're not sitting there yeah. whining. No. You don't have any women no. in leadership. That's right. No, she went and g- became the woman in leadership. That's she exactly went and got right. her done. That's good. You know, you don't have anybody with a southern <laughs> accent. Well, you get get your butt up off the right. couch and go do something. That's, That's right. the thing, man. So, you know, whatever it is that you're whining about, she didn't. There's not a whine in her body. No. She doesn't know how to whine. 
No, I mean, she, she saw the goal Love it. and she went after it. And here's a point that you need to understand about your opportunity to move up in this world. Certainly now more than ever before. Right this second is now. It's now. And people, listen, leaders need someone that they believe will help them win. And if you just show up, you show up early, you have a smile on your face, you do the job they've asked you to do, you do more than they ask you to do, you look for ways to help them, serve them, serve the team, add you're value. all in, add, just be valuable, and here's what happens, you will rise to the top. You can't, you can't keep from happening, because most people are takers. If you'll add value exactly instead right. of taking value, well, you know, people walk into a job and they look at the place and go, I wonder how much they'll pay me. Why don't you figure out how much you can add value and they will gladly give you money. This is how this world works. But being a dadgum parasite, man, she is awesome. Yeah. Got me fired up. I like it. This is The Ramsey Show. Coleman Ramsey personality is my co-host today. This is the Ramsey Show. I'm Dave Ramsey, your host. Dr. John Deloney, Ramsey personality, has a brand new book, is in pre-sale right now. It will actually come out a little bit later here in April. We just got the shipment in, though, so we actually have them in stock. We're ready to go when the book is ready to launch. And we've sent them out to the bookstore chains and everything, so they'll be in the stores on time, which is kind of a good thing given the paper problems and logistics problems and all that stuff out there. So, yeah, supply chain issues. But, we, hey, we got books, so we're excited. It's going to come out on time. The book is Own Your Past, Change Your Future. If you've ever heard Dr. John on the Dr. John Deloney show or heard him on here and thought, man, if I could just sit down with him for a few minutes one-on-one and have a coaching or counseling session, I really think I might be able to get a handle on some of the things that happened to me in my past and be able to move on with my future. Let me tell you what, that's what this book is. It's like having a personal counseling session with Dr. Deloney, and you ought to sit down and do it. Own your past, change your future. It'll make you laugh, make you cry. It did me. It'll challenge you. did me. And you take the steps he outlines and take advantage of your free therapy because if you pre-order it, you're going to get a month of free one-on-one weekly therapy from the folks at Better Health. I mean, they are incredible. This is an incredible offer. It's all included in a $20 book purchase. This is a bargain. Yeah, so check it out. RamseySolutions.com. The book is Own Your Past, Change Your Future. Lisa is with us. Lisa's in Cleveland, Ohio. Hi, Lisa. Welcome to the Ramsey Show. Hey, Dave. Thank you for having me. Sure. What's up? Well, um, I uh, was married for 26 years, six kids. Um, I did. Uh, we struggled in our marriage. My husband had a lot of his own struggles. And uh, so I found out about you, and I started to do the baby steps by myself. Um, got us out of debt, um, except for the house, and he, he had a lot of student loans, like 100000 And uh, we just, marriage kept struggling. <laughs> so I finally filed for divorce. Um, I moved in with my mom and dad last July, um, sold the house on my own, um, found a buyer, gave him half the money. Um, and then a uh, month before our court date in December, he died of COVID. Oh, my um, goodness. And uh, I'm sorry. Um, and so now I have like this, you know, huge chunk of money. I don't know what to do with it. I, I plan on buying a house. My parents were actually going to help me with the down payment. Um, now they don't have to. Um, and, uh, you know, I was wanted there to take a will? The house. Uh, he had no will, so I was a beneficiary. 
The beneficiary um, on what? His life insurance. He oh. had $500,000. So you're getting $500,000 um, and you got the house money. And, yeah, and he had a $75,000 life insurance with his work. How much was um, the house? Uh, we sold it for two twenty two twenty five, but we had a hundred and some odd equity line on it that had to be paid off. So you got like six hundred uh, grand or six hundred fifty thousand bucks. Yeah, right? and then he, yeah, and he's got forty thousand that an attorney's working on getting for me, and uh, thirty thousand in retirement. And the student loan was in his name. Yeah, so those are all. Mm hmm. Well, they're um, forgiven. If they're federal student loans, they're forgiven upon death. Do not pay those. Yes. Yeah. You'll have to provide death certificates, and you'll have to go through a, a myriad of uh, federal paperwork. Oh, my gosh, what a horrible thing you're going through. Wow. Yeah. It's been, How old it's are your kids? Rough. The oldest is 29, and the youngest is 12. And I, I have the two minors and the college kid with me, but we're split up into two different houses right now. Um, I really want to get a home so we can heal and just move forward. Um, but I'm getting advice from, you know, tons of different people. Don't pay cash for a house. Don't, mm -hmm. you can invest that. Do you, and, do you, do you have you a know, career? Different things. I'm actually, um, I'm writing on my award letters from social security for the three minors. And my plan was to, um, pay cash for a home and go back to school full time. I want to go for respiratory therapy. Okay, what price range home are you thinking of? That's the hard part. <laughs> That's actually what I'm asking you. Uh, everything in our area seems to be in about the two hundred and fifty to three hundred range. Yeah. Okay. So if you have so. se if you have seven hundred thousand and you put three hundred towards the house, and you pay cash for it, then you've got the money to go back to respiratory school, and you put yourself on a really really tight budget, right? Yes. Yeah. Okay. That was my plan. That's okay. that is my plan. Now, let me let me give you one other thing to consider in this. Normally, when I hear something like this going on, I tell people try not to make big decisions for a while. Yes. Because your brain is clouded. 26 years of marriage now clouded by a divorce that was underway um and the the trauma that goes with this, you start wondering if you did something wrong deep down inside. The inner voices start speaking to you. You know, all the stuff that normal human beings would experience if they were going through what you were going through. Okay? And mm -hmm. so m my proposal to you is is that no normal human, having gone through what you've gone through in the past two years, uh, would be thinking as clearly as someone who hadn't gone through all of those things. Agreed? Yes. That all of this damage and all of this trauma and all of these problems and the grief and the weirdness of a divorce that's almost final, but 26 years of marriage, you're already grieving the loss of the marriage, in a sense, in the process of doing that, and then he dies. Oh, my gosh. It's like, it's like this is stacked upon, stacked upon, stacked upon. Do you hear what I'm saying out loud? Yeah. So yeah. If, it, yeah, might not be a, it might not be a bad idea. <laughs> To rent something for six months and let the cobwebs clear. Okay. And make a better decision six months from now. Um, I think the numbers you're giving me sound okay, and I don't hear anything in the way you're discussing this, your your sentence structure, your voice, tone. Can She sounds like she's got her stuff together, right? <laughs> So we got a we got a mic problem in here, but anyway, yeah, I oh, think that's okay. That's okay. The uh, uh, so are you plugged in? Um, but anyway, so yeah, you sound solid talking to you. But I would be worried if I were in your shoes that I might not be making the most clear, perfect decision together. Yeah. And so I, I, it's okay to go rent you a nice house for six months, get all the kids and the family together, and you guys just all have a little a margin, a little bandwidth to just process this, all this pain. Because your kids lost their dad. Yeah, yeah. And that's in this. And they were already going to have a split family, and they had all that. So they're traumatized, Right. Yeah, they, I mean, and the, the relationships with their dad were pretty strained before this. You yeah, know? and so they've got this weird thing of, gosh, I wonder if, if you know, they, they've got stuff running through their heads. And I, I just, yeah. 
it, it would not be a bad thing for you to wait a little while to make a three hundred thousand dollar decision. But if but you sound like you can go ahead if you want to. I'm just warning you to be careful. And it's okay. I want to give you permission to take your time. And I also want to give you permission to ignore any idiot telling you not to pay cash for a house. You have plenty of money. Mm -hmm. Okay. The other thing I would add, Dave, is take your time on the respiratory therapy school. Look at multiple options. Do your homework. What's that going to cost? Make sure that's the right decision for you. Because this is the same kind of thing. She's thinking about a yeah. new future. Very solid. I feel she's very yeah, but stable. If you, if you just picked that because, oh, I think I'd be yeah. stable. I could make some money. Yeah. That's the wrong choice. That's right. So let, let us send you a copy of Ken's book from Paycheck to Purpose as well. And you can that's some of your homework. You can read through that while you're making uh, – verifying in a sense oh let me do this too let's get you, let's get you the uh, get, get clear, clear assessment. assessment i think that'll really i'm going to give you the get clear yeah. assessment as well i want you to take that assessment we're going to give it to you all free and um maybe we can help you kind of make just make sure your mind is real clear on all of these career and house purchase decisions so oh, wow what a weird thing oh my gosh wow yeah. heavy tough. stuff yeah Ken Coleman, good hour. Good hour to the folks in the booth. This is The Ramsey Show. Hey, folks, Ken Coleman here. Did you know The Ramsey Show is one of the most popular podcasts in the world? Get your daily dose of advice on life and money. Check out all of our shows from The Ramsey Network wherever you listen to podcasts. about your character. You can have money and a career. You are the hero in your story. Live from the headquarters of Ramsey Solutions, it's the Ramsey Show, where debt is dumb, cash is king, and the paid-off home mortgage has taken the place of the BMW as the status symbol of choice. I'm Dave Ramsey, your host, Ken Coleman. Ramsey Personality is my co-host today as we answer your questions about your career, about your jobs, about your relationships, about your mental health, about your life, about your money. It's what we do right here on The Ramsey Show. Open phones at 888 888- 825-5225. Michael's in Boston to start this hour off. Hey, Michael, how are you? Hey, Mr. Ramsey, I'm good. How are you? Better than I deserve, sir. How can I help? So I just had a quick question. So I'm a 19-year-old college student at the University of New Hampshire. Um, I have no college debt, no debt at all, um, and I work a job during school and in the summer. So I currently invest like quite a bit of my money, and my question to you is, should I invest more now that I have no debt or expenses, or should I kind of hold money and wait until I do incur expenses later in life? What are you studying? Uh, Homeland Security and Emergency Management. Good for you. Nice. It's a fun degree. And um, how much money do you have in investments? Uh, I have about $42,000 in investments. Cool. And how are you paying for college? Uh, I'm in the ROTC program, so I have a full, full ride for college. Good for you. Fantastic. Thank you for your service. Yes. All right. And um, the full ride is uh, tuition and books and board? Uh, yeah, full ride for tuition, full ride for room, and I get 1200 a year for books. Okay. All right. Very good. Very good. Okay. Um, what is the money invested in? Um, so currently, I have a, I have a vehicle, so I have a Roth. Um, I max that out every year when I can, mm-hmm. and it's in a lot of ETFs right now. Okay. Uh, I know you preach in mutual funds, so yeah. I want to try to. Well, ETFs are fine. There's nothing wrong with an that. ETF. Nothing wrong with it. That's a you know, it's just a way of getting diversification. As long as you just keep it simple and you're not trying to day trade. Sometimes people use ETFs for day trading, and I tell you not to do that. But if you're just dropping it into an index fund, like an S and P ETF, that's fine. It's just like buying an index fund, just about. Not a lot of difference, and so that's. That's probably, that's okay. So here, here's the rule of thumb I use, okay? I My goal for you is four years from today to graduate, four years from today to graduate with zero debt. 
That's job okay. one. Now, we have a plan to do that called ROTC, right? Yeah, Sometimes sir. plans go awry. I don't think yours is right. going to, but it could. Okay, so before I start funding Roth IRAs that you can't touch until you're 59 and a half, I want to make sure that this sharp young dude I'm talking to graduates because you are a better investment than mutual funds are. So in a pinch, right. I want you to be able to access this money to finish school if something blows up with, with ROTC. And I don't think it's going to, but I just want an insurance policy to ensure that that happens. Because you got plenty of life after you graduate to start doing long-term investing. So if you want to dump right. it in ETFs or you want to dump it into a money market, fine. As long as you keep enough in there, your main goal is this is a big old pile of money to ensure that Michael graduates and graduates debt-free no matter what happens out there in the weird world that we live in. Now, if you do graduate like we think, ROTC, you go into the service, right? Yes, sir. I'll put you in the National Guard. Right. Okay. And then you would uh, you take a day job as well, if that's the case, I guess, right? Uh, right. Yes, I'm looking at a couple of police jobs. Okay. All right. Cool. And so you get the day job and you've got, let's call it 80000 in the in, in your mutual funds or in your money market accounts because you just kept plowing money into there and you never needed any of it. Best case scenario happened. Uh, oh, darn. You got 80 grand. You can go, you know, move that towards buying a house. You can move that towards making sure you have your emergency fund. If you change cities, you can pay your moving costs. You're not having to run around and take some job you hate because you're broke. Right. Because when I came out of college, I had $1.17. I had to take a job. And so I took the best paying job that I could get the paycheck the fastest because I needed money and I needed it right then. And I'd like for you to have this as a pad. So this is not about you investing for 60 years old. You've got plenty of times to do that. This is about you making sure that the next five years of your life are amazing. And that includes graduation, taking the new job and settling in the new city. And that's what I want him to do. Yeah, it's great advice, Dave. What you just laid out is a way for him to have options as he launches. He can launch so many different ways because he has that financial pad. I think it's a brilliant suggestion for somebody that age. They just aren't going to have the stress. They're going to have a lot of different ways they can go. They can be patient if they have to be patient to wait for the right thing. So many opportunities uh, by him socking as much money away as possible. You can change directions. You can do a Absolutely lot of stuff. You, you, get, you get when you got you know sixty, eighty thousand bucks laying around. Options. There you can do a lot of stuff, and he's going to have that much Love at the rate that. he's going. Way to go, Wesley's in Chicago. Hi, Wesley. How are you? Hi, Dave. I'm doing well. How are you? Better than I deserve. What's up? I wanted to call because um, my cousin just started a job at Northwestern Mutual and oh, he's God. trying to get me trying to get me to buy a um, whole life insurance oh, no. policy for four hundred dollars a month. And you know, I've been listening to you for a while, and I run the numbers on the policy, and yeah. I could do much better investing that. Yes, uh, in you, you could do just, better leaving it in a fruit jar buried in the backyard than a Northwestern <laughs> policy. Gross. And your cousin won't be in the your cousin will be out of the business in two years. Okay. So what they do, they hire him to get get to all of his connections, his natural market, and then once he milks his list, he's done. He'll run out of things to do, and he'll be out of the business. Now, it, it listen, whole life life insurance is is the payday lender of the middle class. You stay away from whole life life insurance. And oh, by the way, Northwestern Mutual is one of the worst policies of all the bad policies. This is like below the suck bar. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. I was kind of curious, you know, how do I go about, you know, telling him that I don't don't want to do that? Because, you know, I, I know it's not going to go well. It's not going to go well because he's been trained to come after your throat with arrogance, like you're an idiot. That's how you're going to be treated. It's how they train their salespeople. And so it's not going to go well. You're just going to have to smile and be kind and. And remember, this is your money. You don't owe him anything. Yeah. Less is more here. Dave's right. Yeah, don't just, get just, into. Just uh, say, you know, I, I don't think you're going to convince him yeah. of anything except that you're not going to buy. That's good. Don't okay. try to talk him out of anything. Yeah. I would just say, 
you know, I, I appreciate this, and I'm, I, ho- I hope you do well at your new job, but I'm not interested in this product. I've done a lot of reading about it, and I'm not going to debate with you. You're my cousin. I love you. I do not agree, and I'm not going to buy Whole Life, and I'm sure not going to buy it from Northwestern Mutual. And, I, I, you know, for you, because you're my cousin, I love you. I hope you do well, but not a chance I'm doing it. And that ends the conversation. He ain't going to shut up there, but that should end the conversation. Yeah, dude, please stay completely away from this. You're not going to convince him to quit his job. All you can convince him of is that you're not going to buy. That's all you can do. This is The Ramsey Show. If you're looking for ways to update your home without blowing the budget, I've got it. For years, I've been telling you about our friends at Blinds.com. Blinds.com makes it simple to shop top quality blinds, shades, and interior shutters from home with easy online ordering and free shipping. With Blinds.com, there's no need to renovate your entire home. Just change out what's on your windows with upscale choices like faux wood blinds, cellular, and roller shades or even outdoor shades. Plus, Blinds.com guarantees the perfect fit, whether you do it yourself or you have them measure and install everything for you. Shop their latest looks and see how much you can save at Blinds.com today. The easy and affordable way to make your home more beautiful is Blinds.com. Ken Coleman, Ramsey Personality, is my co-host today. I'm Dave Ramsey, your host. Thank you for joining us, America. It's common sense for your dollars and cents. In a world where common sense is so rare that having some is like having a superpower. All right. Allison's with us in Tampa, Florida. Hey, Allison, what's up? Hi. Pleasure to be speaking with you today. Um, I'm calling because I think I made the worst financial decision of my life. Uh Uh-oh. What'd you do? I am trying to get out of my timeshare. Oh, you did. Oh, you made a horrible yeah. decision. I know. I <laughs> it's know. Legalized, and, it's legalized you know. fraud. Oh, <laughs> where did you buy a timeshare? Like what state? Yeah. Or what company? Where? Well, what I com- bought it in California. In California. What company? It's Wealth Financial. Oh, my gosh. Okay. Oh, how long ago did you buy it? Um, 21. Wow. Just had a weak moment, huh? Yeah. And, you know, my fiance and I are just now ch- trying to save for our first home. So yeah. it's really just like. You, own, on you, you still owe money on this hard. thing? Oh, yeah. Are you kidding me? Oh, yeah. No, I'm not kidding you. And I've, I've really <laughs> tried. I tried everything contacting them. They have reiterated to me many times they have no deed buyback program. And I cannot sell or transfer the loan to anyone until the loan is fully paid off. That's true. Yeah. 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 Oh, what a, it's a horrible, horrible industry. It's just the worst. Like I got the two calls back like to I back. I got whole my, life. I got oh. whole life call, and ne- the ne- the next call has to be about payday lenders. I mean, th- th- oh, this boy. is like the whole life to timeshare to payday lenders. We're oh, gonna have to God. get his blood pressure machine in. Oh here. man, this I'm so sorry. Healthy. Yeah, you're just. You, how much do you owe on the stinking thing? Yeah, uh, about fourteen k. Oh my gosh. So what'd you do? Go out there and stay like for free and they put you in a room and wouldn't let you out till you bought or how'd that work? <laughs> um, no, we were at an amusement park and they, you know, offered us a free vacation, which we got whether or not we wanted to buy. And I told him like my boyfriend at the time, let's, you know, we're not going to do anything. 
Um, the guy obviously like was very good at his job. Um, he had made a lot of promises that I'm realizing aren't even true. Like, for example, if you book with one of their part, excuse me, partners, then you get a free week every time you book with them. So we went ahead and booked um, December, the end of September. Come to realize now we don't get that free week because they're not with that company anymore. You know, things like that. Uh, so this is called a fraudulent inducement. Yeah, he, he told you a lie to get you to buy. So uh, here's what you do. And I, I don't know if this will work, but it's the only shot you got. Okay? okay. Getting out of these things is very difficult. You stepped into a bear trap and it got you on the leg. And getting out of it by yourself, it, it's hard. It's very hard. And even with help getting out of it, it's very hard. Um, we, man, it's, it's, it's a nasty, filthy business as you've already discovered. Yeah, right? And I have heard of the timeshare exit team. They're gone. They're other, gone. They got run out of bu- They got run out of business, got run out of business by the, bu- by the yeah, Washington attorney general all, and so by the, by go up that avenue. Yeah. They're horrible. I mean, it, it was a horrible mess. They got, they did a good job. They got 20,000 people out, but they got run out of business by the timeshare business. They, uh, the legal bills, they got sued 60,000 different ways. And then they got the timeshare business, got the Washington attorney general after them. And it was just a disaster. But for a while, that was a good avenue. There is a couple of groups that are still open doing exits that are legitimate groups. They're legitimate companies that do exits, but the exit, even using one of these people is very difficult. Okay. So no guarantees, but, and they're not, it's not an endorsement. I, they don't work for me they don't uh you know they don't pay me or anything like that there's a company called the newton group uh and they've actually been helping some of the timeshare exit customers that didn't get help because timeshare went out of business uh they're trying to help some of them too but the newton group at timesharetruth.com and uh they've been here to our offices we've met with them i met with mr newton and with the several of the lawyers that are on his staff they're good people but uh, they will look at you in the face and say, getting out of these things is very difficult. But sometimes they're able to pull it off. But no promises. But that's what I tell you. Timesharetruth.com, the Newton Group. And okay. I, I, that, that's the best thing I can give you. And other than that, just yell at the entire world. Don't ever go to a timeshare presentation under any circumstances. There's no reason. There's no free vacation that's worth putting up with this crap. These are low-class human beings. It's a low-class business. It's nasty. It's filthy. They lie. It's legalized fraud. Have I been unclear, Ken? Well, Dave, I was going to ask you to expound on that thought a little bit. <laughs> I, I don't think you've covered it from enough angles, <laughs> quite frankly. But I don't oh, want to criticize. I hate the timeshare business Yeah, because they screw people. And now, I just can't stand when the consumer is getting messed over. Yeah. It makes me mad. So what if she can't get out of this? She's going to she, write a check. She has to pay fourteen thousand dollars, and then and she's then, the proud owner. And then the stupid maintenance fees are going to go up every year. Right. And then can she sell it? It's like it's like it's like a disease you can't get rid of. Oh, that's unfortunate. You can't. Oh. You, they're for sale on eBay for a dollar. Ooh. Nobody really? wants them. Ah. Uh-huh. Because you get the you get the maintenance fees, and the maintenance fees go up every year. Uh-huh. Because these companies are just they're just straight up scum. It's just awful. I mean, they all of them are engaged in it. It's just, oh, it just, uh, please, please, people. You know, it's, don't, never, never go into the tiger cage. The t- that's what I call when you go in for the sales presentation. Yeah. Oh. It's like, oh, you know, I, the I tiger has that. not been fed in four days. Yeah. But if you can sit in the tiger cage and not get eaten yeah. for two hours, we'll give you a free Disney vacation. Yeah. You know, we'll let you go to the water park for free if you can sit with the tiger and not yeah. get eaten. And he's very hungry, though, we will tell you. And you sit in there with the tiger. Don't go in the tiger yeah. cage. They're going to win. Don't go in. They beat you down. What do you think you are, Tiger King? Stay out of there, man. It's just don't do it. Stay away from the tiger. Stinking guy, I'll eat you, man. It's unbelievable. We should do a hidden camera thing where we put oh. hidden camera on me and let me be the most obnoxious question asker. Every time they put some, I throw a question back and we just you keep messing. You could do that. I could do it. You it could. would be hysterical. Yeah, you're. It'd be a big hit, Dave. I go in totally mic'd up, you hidden would, camera. You and would I actually just, be the best Ramsey personality at being obnoxious. I drive. <laughs> 
<laughs> Thank you, Dave. That means a lot. That's like the line from Christmas Vacation well, where, you, where, where he it. says, can, he says see, for, right, can do you send George Camel in there? No, no. Me, it's me. Do you send uh, Deloney in there? No, he no. would already be psychoanalyzing. He would before have fallen you could get for out. and be hugging everybody. Yeah. And Rachel would yeah. make everybody their friend. I mean, yeah. you would, you or me, we're the only two that are left. We have the spiritual gift of confrontation. That's it. Well, and no, we just stir up crap. That's what I mean. Oh, that's what I mean. Yeah. Same thing. Okay. Yeah. And so just, just bugging him and driving him nuts to watch the guy need an antacid. By the time I'm done with him, yeah, you know, just yeah, like just, totally. Because sp- here's what they do: what they do is it's high pressure, and they make you feel guilty. Don't you for love taking your family? Their freebie. Don't you love your family? Yeah, right. You don't love your family? Well, not come apparently on, I mean, as much on. as you do. Don't you love your family? Oh, I would thrive in that environment. It's just- <laughs> I would love that. It would be so good to expose Ken, the high pressure. Ken as the investigative reporter. Yeah, right. Oh, I may yeah. do that. Oh, I, I don't know. Do, there's a couple of these guys that I owe them one or two right now. I owe them a couple of licks back. There's a, I, I bloodied their noses a bunch of times, but I'm not done yet. You're not? No. Off the top I ropes? I hate those guys. Little man. Jimmy Superfly just, snooker from the well, old they days? Just, they just, they just, the body slam. Because you know who it is they take advantage <laughs> of. You know who it is they take advantage of. It's old people most of the time. A lot, yes. The vast majority of these people get screwed yeah. with timeshares are right. the elderly. Yeah. They load them up from nursing homes, put them on buses, and take them to presentations. Oh, yeah. But they also prey on people who actually are broke. And what they do is they put a twinkle in their eye, and they make them feel like they can experience what the better half is, is living with. The, uh, the, the, I'm other, telling the you, other half. I'm telling you. It is an absolute uh, manipulation, too, for, for folks like I that. I wonder what the poor people are doing. Yeah, it's like, yeah. hey, for a really good price, you can yeah. live like everyone uh-huh. else. Yeah, you see what's yeah. going on there. All right. Yeah, it's FOMO. Yeah. yeah. That, yeah. For sure. Oh, my gosh. Yeah, and if you loved your family, you'd spend time with them on vacation. <laughs> we don't guilt trip oh, here, but man. I just want you to know, are you? A, I just want to know, are you a good father? I just want to know, do you love I'd your kids? Go, do you really think that works? Do you love How your kids? How simple-minded do you think I am? That's do you, awful. Do you, wait a minute, you don't love your children? Come no. On. You look like a man that loves his children. <laughs> I mean, you have to buy a timeshare to prove it. Oh, prove your so love. Great. Prove your love. It's not unconditional love. It's timeshare love. This is The Ramsey Show. If you're not using Pure Talk for your wireless, you're paying too much. Pure Talk gives you the same great 5G coverage on the same 5G network as one of the big guys for half the cost. The average family saves over $800 a year. Go to puretalk.com and choose the affordable plan that's right for you. With their 30-day risk-free guarantee, you have nothing to lose. Go to puretalk.com and enter the promo code RAMSEY to save 50% off your first month. Yesterday, I shared a huge announcement with you guys. If you didn't hear, we're taking our wealth build, our Building Wealth Live event on the road. Building wealth's a really hot topic right now. A lot of people making a lot of mistakes around it. Everybody's got an opinion about crypto, single stocks, zero down real estate, gold, anything, you name it. People are doing all kinds of crazy stuff to get rich out there. And uh, we take, we talk about these topics and even more. And we did it in a big event back in January that sold out in about 20 minutes here in Nashville. So we're going to have about 2,000 seats in about six cities. The first one we're announcing is Orlando. We're going to go on tour with this. And Ken Coleman and Dr. John Deloney are going to come with us as well. We're going to add them into the discussion and into your event uh, ticket and everything. So you want to get signed up for this. Uh, These will sell out very, very, very quickly. These are small venues. We're not doing arenas. We're just going to do a couple thousand seats. And so they're going to be ding, ding, gone just like that. So it is Rachel Cruz, George Camel, me, Ken Coleman, Dr. John Deloney, Building Wealth Live. The first one we're announcing, we announced yesterday, is Orlando on May 19th. 
If you're not in Orlando, stay tuned. We're going to be announcing the other five cities soon. I'm trying to get them all tied up and get them out here on the air for you. Tickets start at just $25. You can get a four-pack. So bring, if, if, if it's you and your wife, you and your husband, bring your friends. Bring another couple with you. Only 60 bucks for a four-pack. You can't buy pizza for four people for that. It's too good of a deal, Dave. Okay? It's too cheap. We should be trying Yeah, to I wouldn't have approved that. Yeah, wow. Well, I, I, I may not have approved <laughs> it, but we're doing it. So there you go. <laughs> there this, it is. this is a great deal for there. you guys. I just want to get back out on the road and see Amen people again. To that. We're, we love doing events at Ramsey. Yes. We love being out there with you guys all over America. We love visiting the great American cities and yeah. seeing the great American people. And oh, I can't wait to get back. What out, are the chances so. that we get some Mickey ears on you at this Orlando event if they come? What are the Fairly chances? low. That's what I thought. Okay. Yeah, well, you're like, telling me there's a chance. No, I'm not. <laughs> Thank you, Dumb and Dumber. No, it's the best line ever, yeah. Uh, tickets are $25, four-pack for 60 bucks. Orlando, May 19th, RamseySolutions.com slash events to learn more. Our question today comes from Blinds.com. They have a 100% satisfaction guarantee. If you mismeasure, you pick the wrong color, they'll remake your blinds for free. Free samples, free shipping, and with the new promos they run every month, you'll save even more. Use the promo code RAMSEY for the best deal. Today's question comes from Travis in Wisconsin. I'm having a moral dilemma regarding a job change. I work as a truck driver. And my current employer treats me very well. The uh, Until recently, the company covered 10 states with four drivers and 10 people in support positions. The driving staff is now down to two people, me and one other driver. A company that shares our building complex has been recruiting drivers, and they approached me and offered me a position that is 25% more than I currently make. I'd be home every night, and it offers a better 401k. It would obviously be a good move for me, but it would cripple my current employer to the point where they may go out of business. I have to think about what is best for myself, but my decision will most likely directly impact 11 other families at the same time. What is the right decision to make? Well, Travis, um, the right decision is to do what is best for you. This is a very tough emotional situation. I get this call a lot, Dave, um, on the Ken Coleman show where people go, I love the people that I'm with. They've been good to me, uh, but I know it's time for me to move on. I'm moving on to something that I know is on purpose, yada, yada, yada. But if I leave, uh, I feel like it's going to hurt the company. And, And what I have said, not to be glib and not to be insensitive, but if this man, Travis, leaving this company, uh, will cause this company to go out of business, then they were going to go out of business with him anyway. One person, while it may do some harm, um, the company's got bigger issues than whether Travis is there. They've already been whittled down to the point where it's just Travis and somebody else. So going down with the ship here, that's the, the old school metaphor, is not honorable. It doesn't make sense. You have to do what is right for you and your family. This is an absolute no-brainer. Uh, do your best to transition out uh, the the classy way, but yeah, you got to do what's right for you. It's not your problem that the company has been crippled. Yeah. Um, but he's a good dude, and I understand the heart behind. He's it. got a great heart of loyalty, <clears throat> but um, if if you stay, if you leaving causes them to go out of business, they're going to go out of business if you stay, without question. They're not going to, if they're down to one driver being there or not being there causes them to go out of business, it's too late. It's over. Mm -hmm. So you you don't, you can't carry that responsibility or that guilt because it's not accurate. Okay. It's, um, yeah. Does it put them in a hurt and are are you kicking them when they're down? Yeah, a little bit. And I appreciate the, 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 that that bothers you. That means you're a good person. Mm -hmm. So here's what I would do, um, to try to, you know, to try to, Uh, I guess, offset that a little bit. I would go to your future employer and say, I'm not going to be able to come for a little while. What's the latest start date you can give me? Because I really don't want to mess these guys over over here. I want to try to help them make the transition, and I need to give them a super long notice. Can you wait one month for me to come instead of just two weeks? And by the way, you you want me to come because I'm the kind of guy that – acts this way so i'll act this way towards you when i'm here mm-hmm. i'm not going to mess you over so it, it, you know you don't want to hire people that are going to cut your throat and i don't like cutting my old guy's throat over here i appreciate the offer what's the latest start date you can give me and if he gives you four weeks out instead of two weeks out then you go back into your uh, current employer and you say hey listen here's what i've negotiated i can leave tomorrow or i can leave in four weeks if you'll increase my pay 
while I'm here, I'll stay four weeks so you can get time to get some drivers on. Mm-hmm. And, and you get in a, you know, you get in a hardcore recruiting mode and get you some drivers in here. And because and, I, I love you guys and I don't want to leave you in a lurch. And so I've negotiated it this way. I am leaving now or two weeks or four weeks, your choice. You need to give me a raise to stay during that four weeks while you go get drivers. And that's not unfair. That's very reasonable. And, you know, if you did that with me, um, I'm probably going to go ahead and set you free, even if it hurts. Mm -hmm. Not because I'm mad at you, but just because I've got a saying around Ramsey, have since I started this place, when your spirit leaves, you should take your butt with it. Mm -hmm. And uh, because people sticking around at a place where they no longer care, no longer plugged in. They they're, they're, they have their eyes on the future. They've already moved on. Uh, it's it's very difficult to not say negative things. It's very difficult to uh, not roll your eyes. It's very difficult to, you know, bring it. You mail it in instead and all of that. So people working on a two-week notice around here, we do it a little bit. We'll do three days or four days to get stuff transitioned. But uh, we, we accept the two-week notice, and that's a classy thing to offer it. But seldom do we work them out at Ramsey. We, yep. we just, when your butt leaves, you ought to take your spirit with it. So, But you go in and talk to those two guys and, and treat them like men and women and grown-ups, and you be a grown-up. And I think you'll find a way to do this with great honor because you're a man of honor. Yeah. See, the flip side of this, though, Dave, is, is when you begin to feel a sense of guilt that's coming from a place of a completely false narrative. Guilt is usually a legal term. It says you've done something wrong or you're accused of doing something wrong. Didn't do anything wrong. You didn't do anything wrong here. And so that's the first step. The second thing is, is what if you felt so guilty that you, you turned down a great opportunity for your family, 25% pay raise, a better 401k, home with the kids? I mean, that's the trifecta. And you turn that down all because you think you're going to be a jerk and you're really worried about what somebody's going to say about you if you leave them then you you're are going there, to be what's known as an unhappy employee you're going to be resentful you're going to be miserable and you're going to have your eye over on the other opportunity all the time and this thing is already going downhill it just doesn't serve well and here's the point i'm making people feel like doing something good for themselves is selfish now when it is at the uh plight of someone else or of course it's selfish but there's nothing selfish in this and we've got to get over this idea that bettering our lives is something we should feel bad for i i really other other than the pit of hell dave i don't know where that comes from (laughs) it's straight from the pit of hell okay i mean it really is this idea that you better yourself uh, well you should feel guilty well it's it's ridiculous it's a bit freudian for sure yeah yeah that's just this idea that there's a a cloud hanging over your head it's like oh i i finally have had something good happen you know no but that's not this guy he's just this guy's just trying to be a man of integrity he's trying to be a man of honor and i appreciate that so there's a way you could do it with a little bit of gentleness and a little bit of stretch in there get that four week notice get a little raise while you're doing that and then let your current employer your former employer make the decisions on how quickly this all goes down and you will have you will have been honorable and you made your call Ken Coleman, Ramsey Personality, is my co-host. Thank you for joining us. Jenny is on the line in Orlando, Florida. Hi, Jenny. How are you? Hey. Thank you so much for taking my call. Sure. I am a little late to the day's party. Um, for context, I um, got divorced in 2020, and I was really worried about budgeting, and one of my friends turned me on to Total Money Makeover. Um, I'm about to possibly make a big decision. Um, I bought a new house. Well, I bought a house when I moved to Orlando. And I did a 30-year mortgage. But I've been paying extra towards my principal every single month. Mm -hmm. So I've got 12. I just made my 12th payment. I'm thinking about taking a healthy chunk out of savings. And I've read a lot of 
conflicting information. Um, but then I look at how much interest I would pay versus how much interest I'm earning mm-hmm. in my high yield savings account. The high yield savings account is kind of a joke, isn't it? <laughs> it's like, it haha, not really high and not really yield. It's like it neither. It's higher than a bank. I know, but the, it's like, you know, what is it, a quarter of a percent or something? No, it's like 0. 0.7. Ooh, 0. 0.7. Mm. Didn't even get I'm all the so way to excited. one, huh? Yeah. Where are the streamers? Mm. Yeah, oh, please. Nice. I want the fireworks to go off now. Yeah. So, okay. And your mortgage so, is what, three or four? So, my mortgage is 2.625. Yeah, okay. And it was a 30 year. Yeah. I've already paid down. Uh, twenty-seven five. Mm-hmm. Everything extra that I get. How much is in your savings at point seven? Um, savings is ninety-five nine thirty-three. Ninety-five thousand dollars. Yes. Okay. And what do you make I'm a year? I'm stacking everything I away. Understand. And what do you make a year? Um, eighty-eight. Do you have any other debt? Um. I don't want to say it out loud because you might have an aneurysm. <laughs> um, I have <laughs> monthly maintenance on a timeshare. Oh, here the we go. Shares. Okay, we're still going with timeshares. Okay. Oh, the, all right, the timeshare is paid off. Good. Do you have the any other debt? Do you have any other debt? Nope. Okay, good. Nope. All right. And do you have an emergency fund in addition to the 95000 or does that include your emergency fund? So that includes my, my three to six months. Okay. What do you think your three to six fund? month emergency fund should be? I'm thinking around 50,000. That might be a little steep, but I'll go with that. Okay. So well, let, let's, put, let's, put, let's put, let's put 50,000 on your mortgage. How much is your mortgage balance? So my mortgage balance right now is uh, 89,471. Great. Okay. I'm going to put 50 on it. And then I'm going to pay it off in the next two years. Okay. Now here's the thing: you and just, my, you just, you just listen. You just got a, you just got a four percent rate of return, and you thought high yield at 0.7 was good. Mm-hmm. So we just got you a 3.6 percent rate of return, paying off, paying down mm-hmm. on that 50,000. The other money's going to sit there as your emergency fund, and then you're going to pay the rest of this off. Here's why I'm telling you to do this: because here's what's important: it's not the getting out of debt thing that's important; it's what getting out of debt does for you. When you have no house payment in the world, no payment in the mm-hmm. world, all you have, and you have an $88,000, $90,000 income, you are going to become very wealthy. It's that simple. Because okay. now if you pay yourself a house payment into a mutual fund, in a few years, that's a million dollars. It doesn't take that long. And you're not that okay. old. How old are you? I'm 55. Yeah, I didn't think you were very old. I just, okay. I, I just I sound like I'm 12. No, it's okay. Um, I no, I, 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 I really, I really <laughs> thought I, that's what I, I was thinking. You're probably in your 50s, but not by the sound <laughs> okay. of your voice, but by what's going on in your life. So uh, mm-hmm. I, I think that uh, you know. So 20 years from today, when you're 75, mm-hmm. you're going to have a net worth of two million dollars. Uh, Seven hundred, eight hundred thousand dollars of that will be this paid for house, and 1.3 will be what's in your mutual funds. That's my prediction okay. for you. I think you're going to be a Baby Steps millionaire. You're on your way. And that's why I'm telling you to do this. Because as, okay. as we've studied millionaires, we find they primarily become millionaires with two main elements, a paid-for house and a loaded-up retirement account and good mutual funds. And the first $1 to $5 million of net worth that people do as they become wealthy doing Dave Ramsey. I know some of you idiots out there think people don't get wealthy doing Dave Ramsey, but they get wealthy every day doing Dave Ramsey. And so you, if you don't believe that, you're an idiot because I've led more people into millionaire status than just about anybody else on this planet. And so you walk this stuff out, you play these baby steps, you pay, get your house paid off, you build up your retirement accounts, you're going to end up with millions of dollars. Now, you're not going to end up with $200 million. You're not going to be Bill Gates or Jeff Bezos. That's not what I'm teaching you to do. But I'm teaching you to become a millionaire. So you retire with dignity and you change your family tree and you get control of your freaking life. And you're going to do all of that. You're amazing. You've done a great job. Hold on. We're going to have the team pick up and send you a copy of Baby Steps Millionaire. That's what I would do if I woke up in your shoes. I think she's cool. She's amazing. And remember, she's got an $88,000 income. 
on top of this. And she so, just went through a divorce two years ago. Yeah, so you're right. She's going to be able to pay that house off quickly. She's going to be able to replenish that emergency fund. $39,000 uh, left gosh. on the house. There's 89 owed today. We put 50 on it. There's 39 left. So it's 20 a year. She'll crush it. 20 a year over two years coming out of 88. You can pay 20 a year. Yes. Okay? Absolutely. You could probably pay 40 a year. Yep. And be done with it in one year if you want to beans and rice it a little bit. Yep. But um, I'm not even saying do that. Have a great life and still pay it off in two yeah. years. She'll be 57 years old with a paid-for house. Come on. Touchdown! Yeah. I like that. I mean, it's it's th- this is very exciting. And you love the intensity. Mike's in Boston. Hey, Mike, what's up? Hi, Dave. Thanks for taking my call. Sure. Go straight to your um, point so we don't run out of time. I want Ken to answer your question. Okay. Um, straight to my point is, uh, I have a, I have a job. I make about 52,000 a year and I was offered a job, uh, for a little bit more, maybe three or $4 an hour. But with the present job, I, I could get like 10 or 15 hours overtime. Uh, and I make quite a bit more. I mean, where, where do you draw the line between, you know, uh, uh, how much you can make in quality of life. Um, so the new job's going to give you a uh, better quality of life, but not make as much money. Is that what I'm hearing? Yeah, it would be more per hour, but, uh, you know, overall, but less money. Um, yeah. Yeah. there's going to be less money over the year. You know, I don't, maybe I should just read Paycheck the Purpose, huh? <laughs> and, well, uh, it's a good idea, uh, but here, let's just let's just break this down. What is the overtime? I let's take the money out of the equation. What is the overtime doing to you physically, emotionally, relationally? Well, physically, I mean it's tiring, but you know I'm I'm a pretty strong guy. Yeah, you can handle broad it. Shoulders, I can handle it. Although you know, I mean it's very like I, a year ago I tried to take piano lessons, but I couldn't because I couldn't find somebody that had a erratic schedule like All I right. did. So there's a Everybody hobby wanted, that you can't you know, do. Is it is it affecting yeah. your family life in a very negative way? No, no. So it's a toss no. up. So here's the deal. How old are you? Yeah, uh, fifty five. When you're 65, 10 years from now, which one of these are you going to be glad you did? Uh, well, I'd have a lot more money, right, when I'm 65 than right now. But Yeah, I, but let me tell you this. I, I you're limiting yourself. If I keep doing this overtime, right? I, I think there's your answer. So, I, number one, I think you're limiting yourself that this n- new opportunity that's been offered to you is the is the only opportunity for you to do something where life balance, if you will, is a little bit better, uh, but you're limited financially. I just think that's the wrong way to look at this. I, I think this opportunity is, is one for you to not just take it just yet, but look into what are some other opportunities that might be out there if I'm patient. Um, but I, here, here's the ultimate decision. I think you got to sit down with your family and you've got to decide the good old-fashioned grandma's pros and cons – and follow your heart. What is your heart telling you to do? This isn't a big financial difference here. This is not something that I would be stewing over and making it this big, huge decision. I don't think it's that financially. I do think it's a big decision for you in your quality of life. And Dave, I, I thought that question is, that really leads to the heart answer. 10 years from now, what decision yeah, do I kinda you like, make? I kind of like C, none of the above. Go find something making seventy-five thousand dollars a year on forty well, hours. Well, that's what I suggested. I want him to look at that before yeah. he goes after this. I mean, we had that caller in the other hour yeah. that went from fifty yeah. to a hundred thousand in fifteen months because she went after it. Because she went after it. Yeah. She said, "I want more money." Shake the apple tree, Mike. I think that might be the strategy. Yeah. See what happens. And hang on, we'll send you a copy of From Paycheck to Purpose, bestseller by Ken Coleman. Show you how to do it, and it's our gift to you, brother. Thanks for listening. Hey folks, Ken Coleman here. Did you know The Ramsey Show is one of the most popular podcasts in the world? Get your daily dose of advice on life and money. Check out all of our shows from The Ramsey Network wherever you listen to podcasts. This is The Ramsey Show. You can be intentional about your character. You can have money and a career. You are the hero in your story. Ken Coleman, Ramsey personality, is my co-host. Thank you for joining us, America. This is The Ramsey Show, live from the headquarters of Ramsey Solutions. 
where debt is dumb, cash is king, and the paid-off home mortgage has taken the place of the BMW as the status symbol of choice. I am Dave Ramsey. We're going to talk to you about your mental health, about your jobs, about your boundaries, about your relationships, and about your money. Yeah, we talk about everything here. Right in front of you. 888 825 Carrie is in Chicago. Hi, Carrie. Welcome to the Ramsey Show. Hi, Dave. Hi, Ken. Thanks so much for taking my call. We appreciate so much what you guys do. Well, thank you. How can we help? Um, so hopefully this will be a quick question. Um, our family is in baby steps four, five, and six. Um, last year we started an HSA. We've got about $5,100 in that right now. Um, And just kind of wanting to get your thoughts on when you recommend investing your HSA and what you recommend investing it in. We use a company called Health Equity that allows us to put our HSAs into mutual funds. And we recommend Mm -hmm. to our team, and I personally put mine all in mutual funds because I don't use them. If you think you're going to use your HSA, to pay medical bills or deductibles or whatever, um, or you know, buy medical services, which you can certainly do. If you're actually going to use it for that, then um, then you probably don't want to put it in mutual funds. You probably want to put keep enough of it anyway in in simple money market type accounts that it's accessible. Because you don't want you don't want you don't want to put ten thousand dollars in there and then the stock market go down and be worth eight thousand dollars about the time you have a medical event. Right. Right. And we're a pretty healthy bunch. We don't really, we really haven't had to use it at all. Yeah. Um, well, we, yeah, and, and also the, the, the thing about where you are in your baby steps, you've got the income probably to cover whatever you need. Right. Yeah. Our max out of pocket per year would be about $7,000 mm-hmm. um, with our plan. So I just, would it make sense to leave at least that in there as liquid cash and then invest? The rest, That'd be our fine. company does give us $2,000 a year That'd be fine. towards it, and then we, we put in the max. Yeah, that'd so. be fine. Okay. And in, then, in effect, that's what um, I have done. I've got like a couple hundred thousand bucks in there because I, I started mm-hmm. doing it when uh, Bush first, uh, George W. first came out with it. It was under his administration. That's how long it's been around. And I fully funded the HSA every single year since then, and I've never touched it. So anytime mm-hmm. we, we're a pretty healthy bunch too, knock on wood, but anytime we've had a medical anything, I just wrote a check for it and I left my investments alone. Sure. And I, so I've always had it in good mutual funds and it's always grown. And in a sense, it just becomes another IRA of sorts. Right. Right. And okay. so, yeah. And, then, and, and um, where the company's giving you an extra two grand, that's awesome. Have at it. Yeah. Because that adds up pretty quickly. It has. I mean, it's turned into like serious money. I mean, it's real. Yeah. So, um, a couple hundred grand. Yeah, there we go. I'm going to have so. to tell Stacy we're not taking the kids to the doctor. <laughs> a little note here. So, yeah, just, just <laughs> draw a hot bath. We're saving our money. Yeah, there's <laughs> some Epsom salts. Go knock yourself out. Yeah. <laughs> Steve's in Oklahoma City. Steve Epsom salt. How are you? How are hey. you, Steve? Oh, not too bad. Good. How can um, we help? All right, quick situation for you. Okay, so there's 250000 sitting. It's my mother's money. She's um, on disability, living with a brother, has been for about a year, and my other brother has liquidated everything, and the money is just sitting cash in the bank. And we're trying to figure out how to keep it from going to Medicaid in case she was to need to go into a facility situation. You can't. Medicaid is for poor people. It's welfare. Okay. Or okay. And she's not on welfare. She's got a quarter of a million dollars. So if you transfer this money in order to hide it and get welfare, that's called welfare fraud. It's called Medicaid fraud. So your mom your mom your mom should not want to go into your mom should not want to go into a welfare nursing home. Right, right. Okay. And you shouldn't want for her to. So you well, guys, no, we, we don't. We're just trying to figure yeah. out. And, and she's, you said she's know, got but, dementia. Um, it, it's a, a kind of a form of dementia, basically. Okay. All right. Well, what I would do is I would use, I would make sure the money's invested. I wouldn't just leave it in an account. I'd put it in some good mutual funds. And if you do that, it'll throw yeah. off a couple thousand dollars a month. And I would bring in some help to help your brother, and help take care of her. 
get some in-home care. You can actually provide nursing home services in his home with outside help almost as cheap as you can hire a nurse as, as you can buy a nursing home if not cheaper depending on how you structure it if he's willing to do all of that and willing to put up with um, nurses coming and right. going and and cares caregivers coming and going and you know it's it's a hassle but you know this money will support her and take care of her she'll be fine well that's what it's for it just was i wasn't sure if there was an amount of time that that outweighed that they would take the money or not. Yeah, five years. If you move it and five years, if you right. move it and she does not go into nursing home for five years and she is a presents herself as a poor person who needs welfare to be put on Medicaid and go into Medicaid nursing home, um, they won't. They look back on it as five years. So after five years, the money is released. After no, after five years, the money will no longer be. If you move the money into you and your brother's name, five years later, yeah, already done. five years later, they won't look back, and you can put your mother in a welfare nursing home. Oh, okay. All right. I think well, that's immoral, that's by the way. Great. I think that's immoral. Right. Yeah. <laughs> I, I understand okay, that. Okay. I'm just making sure you understand where I stand on it. You do whatever you want to do, but I, I think that's wrong. Your mother has a quarter of a million dollars. It's there for her care. It's not for you and your brother. It's for her. She saved money her whole life, and she it's there to take care of her. Uh, and by the way, if she is at this level of care, the average nursing home stay in America is 2.3 years. And the average nursing home cost in America is $55,000 a year. Okay, so that's 100000 bucks. 150,000 bucks of the 250, you guys will still have 100 left over for your inheritance. On average, that's what you're facing. Now, if you, you can go buy a nursing home for $150,000 a year, too. And you can go buy a nursing home for whatever. But um, I, I, you know, the reason we work, the reason we save money is to care for ourselves, not to be on the government dole. And the quality of care is different. The experience is different for your mom. This is your, you know, your mom ought to, ought to be treated like a queen, uh, not a welfare recipient. She's got a quarter of a million dollars. And that's, that's how, that's how I view it. So again, you guys do whatever you want to do. And you called here. So that's the thing. So the nursing home thing is weird. It's like the nursing home is going to take our money. We don't say that when we go to a restaurant. They're going to take my money. We say, no, I'm going to give you some money so I get food. Mm-hmm. When you go to a nursing home, you say, I'm going to give you money so I get care. They're not taking your money. They're not thieves. They don't have a gun. You know, it's not. It's not. It, but there's something in the American brain that feels like nursing homes being paid is unfair. Yeah. And they shouldn't be paid. It's weird. It's just weird. This is The Ramsey Show. On baby step number one, eh? How'd you guess? With health care costs rising, learn how Christian Healthcare Ministries can help you make the most out of your budget. Visit chministries.org slash budget. Don't worry, it's worth it. suspect by now your New Year's resolutions have run out. If you had resolutions, they're usually gone by about Valentine's Day. Because people trying to do it on your own with no plan and no, pro- no proven process, usually these things are just wishes. They're not goals. They're not resolutions. They're just wishes. Well, instead, we want you to actually be able to pull this money thing off, actually get it done. We want you to work the process and become a Baby Steps millionaire like the latest bestseller. You can do this by joining a Financial Peace University class. About 10 million folks have been through this class. It works. We not only show you how to get out of debt, we show you how to become wealthy. 
And many, many people, when they follow the plan, do well, everyone that follows the plan all the way through becomes wealthy 100% of the time. It's just a matter of how long it takes and how much you get. Uh, you know, I can't tell if it's going to be $10 million or $1 million, but you're going to end up wealthy. And it's not, it's not a magic pill, and it's not a get-rich-quick. It's hard. But we get you out of debt. We get your, teach you about insurance. We teach you about investing. It's the money class you should have had back when you were in high school, but nobody hardly teaches it in high school until we start teaching it in high school. Financial Peace University, in person and online, it's the Proven Money Plan. You can do a free trial at Ramsey Plus if you want to. Check it out. Go to RamseySolutions.com slash FPU for Financial Peace University. That's RamseySolutions.com slash FPU. This is the Ramsey Show. Ken Coleman, Ramsey personality, is my co-host. Lisa is with us in New York City. Hi, Lisa. Welcome to the Ramsey Show. Hi, thanks for taking my call. Sure, what's up? Well, I've listened to you for years. I've paid thousands of dollars in debt, and I'm at a point where I have my six months emergency fund. I'm probably putting about 14% in retirement, and I just have my mortgage as my debt. Um, You're amazing. So, well done. Yeah, thanks to you for keeping me all those days on the road. I work in sales, so I listen to you pretty much every time I got in the car. Wow. Um. But anyways, I'm planning to leave the corporate world. I feel like God is calling me into a different direction, healing arts. And I, as I prepare my exit plan from that um, career, I'm wondering what advice you have over the next few months. Should I be saving some a certain amount more money? Should I cut back on what I'm putting in my 401k for a little bit? What do you suggest as I prepare that exit strategy, so to speak? Hmm. Um, well, the main thing I want you to do is get the boat close enough to the dock that it's not a leap. It's a step, meaning that as you move into this other income, go ahead and have that income going. Can we do that? I think so, but I think it might come to the point where the company I'm working for is having major financial problems, so it might not be so much of a choice. They're having major financial problems now? It's... Uh, I don't really want to get into all of it, but yes, there's some, it might be sooner than later. Okay. Well, Lisa, I'm going to jump in really quick. We don't want this dream. I'm assuming this, this business you want to start, is this a dream job for you? Something you really want to do personally? Yeah, it is my calling. Yeah. All right. So here's the deal. We don't rely it's on the call running away. <laughs> yeah. But listen, the year, the current company being a financial problem, isn't the impetus to start and try to make it full time in this calling. Dave's right. You need to start the calling, the side business. That's what it needs to be. We're going to test it. Start small, grow slow, uh, oh, yeah. grow that income. No, I am planting to do that. I know, I'm but what, but what I'm it. saying is, I know, but being smart is if your current company's having financial problems, we need another day job as a backup. You understand what I'm saying? Okay. You yeah, don't yeah. want to put yeah. yourself in, you're in such good financial shape. You, you could kill a dream faster than any other way uh, to kill a dream by putting all the financial pressure on it to provide for you when it's something you're starting. That's a really big yeah, red flag. So, uh, w w what do you do now? I work in sales. Okay. And what are you going to be doing? What's your, what's your dream, your, your business you want to start? Uh, it has a lot of components, but healing arts. Healing arts. Break that down for us. Neither one how, of us. How do you that. make money doing this? Teach me about it. I will be teaching people how to use art for their therapy. I'm also going to be selling some of my artwork. Okay, and um, you, you, I'm also you have heard of Reiki. And to date, you've not done this yet in any. Yes, any, I have. Yes, I have. Oh, you have. Okay. I have. And so, yes, how much yes, money yes. have you made to date? I have been just kind of doing it on the side. I'm, I'm not talking I'm going to do this tomorrow. I'm saying as I prepare myself, I'm, say, I'm not, I'm going to be smart about it. Like, trust me, I've, you know, I've been okay. trying. I've been right. I'm trying to, really I, I, so far. I misunderstood I where you were. Then. So how much have you made yeah, no, doing, he, how much like, do you make uh, doing healing uh, arts right now? I make about 130,000. Doing healing arts. No, 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 no. Oh, I'm asking about the I'm healing not, arts business. I'm not making any money yet. I'm telling you, I'm trying to prepare myself for oh, that okay. job. Right. So uh, what, what should I, I be what doing? I'm, should I be saving extra money? You need to have a big like pile of money, but there's not a big enough pile of money no. for you to jump from something to nothing. 
And so I'm the not, way yeah, you I prepare guess, guess. is you get the healing arts business going right now as a side hustle and gear it up as fast as you can. And it, and if it can if you can get to making sixty or seventy thousand dollars and you can exist on that where you used to make a hundred at the old job, well, then this the night this dream doesn't turn into a nightmare on you. But if you've got two hundred thousand dollars saved up and you burn through it because you make zero for two years after quitting your full time corporate job or losing the full time corporate job because the company collapsed and you didn't have a day job, that's what Ken's talking about. So the way to prepare is not the size of the the the, the uh, Savings account. The savings yeah. account. Yeah. It, it is the size of the income from the side hustle. That's right. That's what that's what I mean by pulling the boat alongside. So it wasn't the way you thought we were going to answer the question. You wanted an answer of how much money you need to be prepared to move. I mean, you could have, I guess you could have $2 million and not burn through it unless you burn through a million a year. But, I, you know, that's not, these aren't options that are on your table. So let's just say that um, it, the most important part of the equation is to get the side income approaching the current income the closer it is to the current income the less risk you would have yeah. and obviously the less burn rate on a savings account you would have yeah I, I think lisa the first step for me is i'm beginning to look in the marketplace new york city uh you're a salesperson a successful salesperson i'd be looking at other companies that aren't struggling financially so that i could move into a more stable day job so that i'm not putting pressure on the dream job the side hustle that's what i'm getting at i think that's the first move. sure save money great Keep saving. But I want you, uh, when you're saying you're working for a company that's struggling financially, I'd be looking for a plan B for the day job. And in case in going. case that happens. That's right. Because the income is more of a problem than the savings. That's the correct. Problem, than the savings. That's what we're trying to get to. So good luck with it. I hope it yeah. works out for you. And thank you for listening. We, I think you've done a great job to get to the point you are, by the way. Yeah. You've done a really, really good job. Very, very well done. I want to recommend a quick little book to her, Dave. Quick okay. read by Austin Kleon. It's called Show Your Work. And you can read it in 10 minutes, but it's it's really important for entrepreneurs and, and entrepreneur want-to-be's that are trying to get something going. Uh, and it'll really encourage you just to kind of get your stuff out there. It, people focus on business plans too much and things like this in the early stages as opposed to just showing their work, getting their work out there, letting the letting the marketplace tell you uh, how this is working. Around here we call better. it – around here the way I teach our team is uh, have a conversation yes. with the marketplace. Yeah. The marketplace will say – you're doing really good. And that looks like green president's faces. <laughs> right. Or the marketplace will say, you suck. And it will like, we ain't buying nothing you put out there. Sound like crickets. And I've had both, by the way. Yeah. <laughs> um, I, sometimes the marketplace says to, to me and to our company, you suck. You're doing a bad job. We're not going to give you any money. And other times they say, wow, you changed our lives. And we're not only going to give you money, we're going to tell everybody else to come and, and get this service or this teaching or this content or whatever it is. And that's how 10 million people went through Financial Peace University. But the, uh, but the ideas that we've tried around here where the marketplace looked back at us and said, you suck. Now, here's the problem. W when you become desperate you, and you start launching products out of desperation or services out of desperation because you need money, that puts a strain on it and the marketplace can smell that. Yes. You smell different. You, you have a stink on you when you're broke. And so that's why I tell folks all the time, try to start your business as a side hustle, pull the boat up next to the dock, and then step in. Don't take a leap of faith. That's only in the movies. This is The Ramsey Show. If you're considering a career in technology, I recommend Bethel Tech and I'm not alone. Here's what Brendan said. Before Bethel Tech, I was driving Uber. Within four months of graduating, I got a job paying $60,000. About two years after that, I got a remote job that pays me $130,000. All thanks to what I learned at Bethel Tech. You could be next. Get started today at BethelTech.net and get $1,000 to $2,500 off of your tuition. Again, it's BethelTech.net slash Ken Coleman. Coleman 
Ramsey personality is my co-host today. Thank you for joining us, America, in the lobby of Ramsey Solutions on the debt-free stage. Andy and Julie are with us. Hey, guys, how are you? Hi, Dave. Doing great. Welcome. Where do you guys live? Wyoming, Minnesota. Ah, welcome to Nashville. Now, where is Wyoming, Minnesota? Uh, 30 minutes north of St. Paul. Oh, okay. Okay, cool. All right, fun. Yeah, we've been to Eagle Brook Church up there a bunch of times. Yep, and real close. Beautiful area. Yeah, very nice. That church has been very good to us over the years. Good folks. Well, fun. Very fun. Welcome to Nashville. How much debt have you paid? 178000 All right. Good for you. And how long did that take? Uh, 26 months. Whoa. And your range of income during that time? We started off at 110000 and finished at 150. Okay. Did you sell something big? No, we, no. <laughs> no, we did have, um, we had a chunk of change that you threw at it okay so you had some savings how much Mm -hmm. savings did you have to throw at it um about thirty thousand. yeah okay i guess it's 140 is still 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 70 thousand you still on beans and rice (laughs) yeah yeah pretty tight wow cool what kind of debt was this um two vehicles and Mm -hmm. then we paid off our house oh look at it weird people Love it. What's this house worth? Uh, about 420 <laughs> wow. And it's yeah. all yours. That's right. Way to go, you guys. <laughs> I can't wait to mow the grass now this year when it's mine. <laughs> now that it's mine, I own it. Yeah. Woohoo! Yeah. That's so cool. Way to go, you guys. Thank you. Way to go. And you did this really fast. Yeah. I mean, the intensity here in these numbers. That's what I was trying to go, trying to run the numbers in my head there. Oh, my gosh. So tell me the story. What happened 26 months ago set you on fire? It's just a lot of YouTube watching, Dave. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we just thought hey, this is something we should do. And we just wanted to make sure uh, our future is secure. You just stumbled into us on YouTube? Or? Yeah. I, I had heard of you um, through our church, actually. Mm-hmm. I mm-hmm. had heard of your name. Mm-hmm. But I just kind of figured that I had things figured out. And I never really looked into you. And I stumbled across you on YouTube. And... He came home one night from work, and I said, oh, you got to check this guy out. You're going to love him. <laughs> <laughs> and, and I did. We, yeah, we were hooked. Like, Saturday nights, we just would watch you. And <laughs> oh, my gosh. Yeah. yeah. So you, you just you knew that the uh, value system was similar, and you're like, okay, this guy this guy's yeah. going to get us out of debt. We're going we're gonna to go on and be wealthy. That's right. Yeah. I yeah. love it. My husband's old school and good old boy, <laughs> just like you. So, ah, yeah. okay. Yeah. 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 All right. The Brothers from a different connection. mother. Okay. <laughs> mm-hmm. All right. Yeah. I knew I had a cousin in Minneapolis. Yeah, that's right. Don't yeah. worry about yeah. that. Yeah. 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 I will say he has a better head of hair than Dave. Well, that's a low bar. Is it? <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> yeah. Way to go, you guys. I'm so proud of you. How's it feel yeah. to be completely free? It's amazing. We can do yeah. whatever we want now. Yeah, really. Yeah. Paycheck comes, we get to keep it. How long yeah. have y'all been married? Uh, since 2010. Okay, yeah. so 12 years. Yep. Have you ever been debt-free in your adult life? I haven't. I was, except a mortgage. No. Oh. So, yeah. But then we got married and kind of just, we weren't out of control or anything. Um, we just, it, when I found you, I just realized that we were still in step two because we had two vehicle loans. And we kind of felt good about having that you know, savings account. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And so I can relate to the callers that call in and you tell them, well, you got money to just, you know, pay it off. And there's just a silence. Like, well, that's everything that I have in Gulp. the bank right now. Yeah. Gulp. yeah. Yeah. Oh, it just got yeah. real. Yeah. 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 So we just watched you a lot. And one day I, he came home from work or another day and I said, you know, let's do this plan. Let's do this plan. We, we have enough to just pay off the vehicles and kind of go down to that you know, small emergency fund. Yeah, there wasn't much left. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Yeah. Then it was go time. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. What did that look like? Because, I mean, these numbers are extraordinary. (laughs) And when Dave asked you a minute ago, you pretty much your rice and beans. Andy, you were like, (laughs) like like you hit a nerve there. Like, how intense was it? I want people to get a picture. How much did you sacrifice? You know, it wasn't really that hard because we're kind of frugal to begin with. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, just not eating out lunch a lot at work. And, you know, we don't do a lot of things that are extraordinary and extravagant. So yeah. it was it was kind of easy for us. Yeah, Seeing the picture when she made a picture of the squares for the house being paid off, that was really big for me. Uh, just watching the watching that happen, and you know, seeing it at the bottom, and once you got to the middle, and you know, you just got closer every day, and it was just, it was really fun to watch it, and sometimes she'd call me and say, I filled in 10 more squares, and I'm like, what? But that was, that was our goal, was to, just, you know, take all the extra money at it and hit it, you know? So nothing was hard about it. You just told us this was easy. 
It wasn't bad. Okay. <laughs> so you're just frugal. really disciplined. I've been frugal my whole life. So, um, I mean, I was like the weird teenager that worked and saved money to go to college. Debt free. I went to college debt free. Look at you. <laughs> Dave, um, Dave, the bass in Minnesota don't care if I have a $1,000 boat. I found that out. <laughs> nice. <laughs> I should have put our boat in there yeah. because, yeah, we've got like a $1,000 boat for the last eight years or yeah. whatever, and we still have it, and we're happy with it, you yeah. know? No plans to replace that anytime soon. Yeah. Huh? It's, it's well, you can if you want now. That's right. You've got the money. <laughs> with cash. Yeah. Way to go, you guys. So yeah. proud of you. So proud of you. So what do you tell people the key to getting out of debt is? What was the thing that, because you were already smart. You already had common sense. You already went to school debt-free. You are already frugal. But something clicked. What was the difference that made you go, all right, game on? Uh, for me, it was just seeing the show and hearing people do it. You know, and, and seeing the results that they had and how happy they were when they were here. Mm. That was a big thing for me. Yeah. Yeah. And for me, it was because I thought that I was doing pretty good. It was just looking at the baby steps mm -hmm. and realizing that we were doing like a bunch of things at the same time. Because mm -hmm. we were. We were even paying towards extra toward the house in mm -hmm. the beginning. Mm -hmm. And we were doing a little bit of retirement and just, but we were just doing a little bit of everything. Mm -hmm. And you know, like when he came home and I said, let's just do the baby steps because it's just so much more, it's just a clear path. It's mm -hmm. simple. Anyone can do it and it just makes sense. And all these people have done it. Mm -hmm. So how much do you guys have in your investments? Uh, north of a hundred right now, but we're going to be ramping that up. Yeah. You'll be able to. Yeah. 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 For sure. So you'll be baby steps millionaires in no time. Yeah. yeah. Way That's to the goal. go, you guys. Yeah. Way to go. I'm so proud of you. Mm -hmm. Very, you. very well done. Good stuff. All right. We got a copy of that book for you, Baby Steps Millionaires, to finish this journey. That's the next step in, uh, next uh, chapter in your story for sure. Also a copy of Total Money Makeover for you to give away to somebody. Somebody's been wondering what happened to these people. They've been smiling a lot. Mm -hmm. yep. <laughs> so they want to know what happened to them. Yeah. This is very cool, you guys. Very well done. All right. It's Andy and Julie. Many Minneapolis, Minnesota, 178000 paid off. House and everything! Did it in 26 months, making 110 to 150 Threw a little savings at it and got after it. Count it down. Let's hear a debt-free scream. Three, two, two one. one. We're, We're debt-free! Debt yeah! That's the uh, second debt-free scream that we've had on today, and both of them said the same thing about different subjects. It was almost like they, uh, there was a, a little bit of an epiphany. They, you know, our, our first one, the lady said, you know, she went from fifty to hundred thousand dollar income. I said, how'd you do that? She said, I just wanted more money. I went and got it. Yep. And it's like they just look up and go, this is possible. Yep. When someone looks up and they're getting a new job in your world, you know, they're, they're, they're uh, going to deal with boundary issues in Deloney's world. They're going to get out of debt over here, build wealth, become millionaires in our world. You know, in, in, wherever we are in Ramsey, when people look up and they think it's possible, we call that hope. Yes. And hope is a big deal. Hope fuels everything. Because if you think you can or you think you can't, you're right, Henry That's Ford true. said. That's right. And that's the truth. Well, you've talked about this a lot at our money events. You know, you, you, you demonstrate it with a clap. But what you're really illustrating is they just decide right now. Mm -hmm. And when he came home that day, she looked at him. They've been watching YouTube. And mm -hmm. she went, let's just do this. Yeah. There which wasn't any like. Which means it can be done. It can be done. So they were already. It's like, I, yes. Once I realize it can be done, that's then it. you go, well, why wouldn't I? You just decided. Why wouldn't I? There you go. Change, as Dave yeah. says. Why, why wouldn't I? <laughs> why, why wouldn't I go double my income? Why wouldn't I pay off my house? Yeah, that's right. Why wouldn't I? Once I believe I can, mm -hmm. yeah. that's hope. Why wouldn't I? Hope is powerful. Hope deferred makes the heart sick. But when desire comes, mm -hmm. it is the tree of life. This is The Ramsey Show.
Ken Coleman, Ramsey Personality, is my co-host today. Our scripture of the day is Isaiah 43, 2. When you pass through the waters, I will be with you. And when you pass through the rivers, they will not sweep over you. When you walk through the fire, you will not be burned. The flames will not set you ablaze. Billy Graham said, courage is contagious. When a brave man takes a stand, the spines of others are often stiffened. Billy Graham, you got to love him. Pretty cool. Open phones at 888-825-5225. Marquis is with us in Madison, Wisconsin. Hey, Marquis, how are you? I am doing well. I am more than honored to be speaking to you guys. It's like a dream. Thank you guys for everything. You too, sir. How can we help? Thank you. So I am from a kind of a, a rougher area. Um, my mom raised three of us by herself. Uh, so I've never really, so she's always, she's listened to you before, but she never had the means to really fully commit and neither have I. So I've listened to you for a while, but now I finally got my, uh, job out of school. So I'm in a, I did an internship over this past summer and it led to a role, which gave me a real salary, which I'm doing that on top of being a single dad and dual masters. So basically what I'm asking you is where do, where do I begin? (laughs) Cause I've been listening to you for a while and I never called because I never had the means or the knowledge to call you. And now I'm just ready to commit and hopefully even teach this stuff someday. Wow. Well, I'm honored. What do you, what do you do for a living now? So I am a ser- service operations supervisor for a, a, a health plan. So we do insurance and stuff like that, like okay. claims, customer service. What do you make? Um, uh, 60, 65. Good for you. Good. And you just finished a four-year degree and you're working on a master's? Uh, dual master's. So I'm the first at my school to ever attempt to do it. So they created the program because I requested it. Uh, it's executive MBA and a healthcare administration master. So I'll do both. How are you paying for it? Uh, student loans at the moment. Never had the funds to. Mm-hmm. How far into it? Are you? How so, far into the uh, dual masters are you? Uh, about a semester, a little bit over a semester, because I took a, a, a summer course as well. Okay. All right. Well, there's a lot going on here in this conversation. Um, Congratulations. I'm proud of you. You've made incredible progress. You've broken through uh, a lot of ceilings, a lot of barriers to get to where you are. I'm proud of you. And I think you're going to go to incredible places. Um, The only question is, what's the best vehicle, the best method for you to get to those wonderful places? And what I'm always looking for is the the quickest right way uh, to get you to uh, your goal. You know, and that's what we're always looking for in these situations. And so in, in Ken's case, where you're working with education, the question is, do you need a dual master's? Is that the quickest right way to get to your goal? And, um, uh, you know, it may or may not be. Uh, but right now, it sounds like that for the first time in your life, and for that matter, in, in a couple of generations, you're actually making a living. Mm-hmm. Yes. And that's like, and that's like a I new just, experience, the way you described it. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. So that's why I'm just saying, I don't even know how I'm going to pay for the uh, the financial piece, but I'm all on board and I'm just, yeah. I'm ready. <laughs> well, um, you know, the first thing that occurs to me, and I'm just going to say it out loud, and you, you get, you're mm-hmm. a grown person, you get to make your decisions, but... Um, I wish you would rest a little bit before you dove into debt to go get this dual degree and just enjoy making sixty-five or seventy-five thousand dollars a year yes. for a little while, and then figure out where you are. Uh, do you have student loan debt from your undergrad? Uh, yeah, I have about a total of like forty k. Um, that's all it was because I didn't go to a bigger school. Good. I also had some scholarships for uh, good. So for l- let me tell you what we have discovered in, as we work with the student loan industry and with people that get student loan debt. And I've run into this all over the place. Um, mm-hmm. the, the vast majority of people who make big student loan mistakes are first generation college students, meaning their mom and dad did not go to college. And that doesn't mean they're evil, but mom and dad, there was no one around to say, hey, don't go that far in debt to do that. It's not worth it. 
No one, no, because like I went to college, I was the first generation went to college. I did, but student loans weren't around much when I was there. So when my kids got ready to go to school, you know, they could go to a super expensive school and we didn't, we could have paid for it. Uh, or they went to a state school in our case and we could have paid for it, but we could guide them because they hadn't, we had been there before. So, and, and sometimes what happens in a situation like you described is you start thinking that all education is worth whatever it costs. And it's worth whatever amount yeah. of debt you go into for. Yeah. And I disagree. It's not. Yeah. It's all not a, e- all education is not smart. That's an odd statement. But yeah. all education is not smart. So, Marquis, I'm going to recommend that you push your put your uh, master's program on hold a little bit, and you take a f- at least a few semesters off. Uh, and, and you may not do that because you may be plugged into this. But I think you're looking for something in this dual master's that is not there. Yeah. You think so? Yeah. So, Marquis. Uh, we could hear it in your voice. You don't want to live financially the way that you had to grow up, and you've done a great job, and you've been very successful getting to this point. You're making good money, and if you follow financial peace and the baby steps, here's the deal. I agree with Dave. In fact, I would go a little stronger. I would press uh, pause on the master's degree until we get out of debt. And, and until you can pay cash, until for you it. can pay cash for it, so that might be two or three years. It but might be your company will pay your that's tuition. That's exactly right. But Marky, here's the deal. Here's what I want you to hear, because um, because we'll walk you through the financial stuff. But here's the deal: those master's degrees will still be there when you get out of debt. They will still be there. The opportunities that might be attached to those master's degrees will still be there. But I think where you're in now, if you're doing a great job and you see what the ladder might look like in your company, I think you could get a couple promotions, make more money without those master's degrees, and get out of debt faster, walk through the baby steps, and really get financially sound, and then ask the question, do the master's degrees get me the – is it the only way to get me where I want to go? If the answer is no – then you don't have to ever go back. But the point is, you're not saying no now. You're going pause, 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 pause. Yeah. So, um, yeah. I, hold on. We're going to sign you up and, and put you into Ramsey Plus for free for a year. I'm going to pay for it. I want you to go to Financial Peace University. I want you to go through the classes. I want you to get on the Every Dollar app. I want you to consume every piece of content in there. And we'll show you how to handle money, young man. We'll get you. Mm-hmm. We'll we'll be the, we'll be part of the story of you changing your whole family tree, and because that's what you're all about. You're all about changing your family tree, and that's no dis, that's not disrespecting or dishonoring your mom. She was a tough warrior princess. She fought and raised kids and scraped and worked her tail end off and got you to where you are. So we want to honor her, <clears throat> and we want to say you're going to take it past there. You're going to go to another level. And so, we're, and we'll show you how, but again, so that hang on and we'll have the team pick up and get you signed up. So folks, here's what I want you to hear loud and clear. Those masters that he's taking are good fields of study. They may or may not ROI, depending on what he's paying for them. We didn't ask that, but he doesn't have the money to go. That's right. And what I want to break among all of you out there, whether you're first generation college students or whether you're not, whether your mom and dad went to school or whether they didn't. Whether, they went to, whether you're the seventh generation to go to school. We have to break this thing that says all education is worth whatever you pay for it. That is absolutely asinine. This is how we have people paying $225,000 to get a master's degree in social work so they get a $38,000 job working for the state as a social worker because they got a master's in sociology. That's just asinine, okay? That's stupid. And we've got to quit being stupid about education. Now, he's not in that situation. But this is the kind of thing that people do when they believe that all education is good, all education is worth whatever you pay for it, and so people spend 200 grand getting a degree in left-handed puppetry, and it's useless. Don't do that. He's not on that bubble, but he's getting close. That puts us out of the Ramsey Show in the books. We'll be back with you before you know it. In the meantime, remember, there's ultimately only one way to financial peace, and that's to walk daily with the Prince of Peace, Christ Jesus. Hey, folks, Ken Coleman here. Did you know The Ramsey Show is one of the most popular podcasts in the world? To get your daily dose of advice on life and money, check out all of our shows from The Ramsey Network wherever you listen to podcasts.